weekends. Can you do stock trading on the weekends? And I think that there is possibilities of doing something similar to that in uh, the shadier parts of the internet. <laughs> Maybe like binary options, things like that, which ba basically binary options are exactly that. But stock trading on the weekends is kind of the kind of a mute point. There's there's no real trades. If there is liquidity out there, it's not something that is uh, available to everybody. This is the How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast brought to you by 10MinuteStockTrader.com, where we cover finance, stocks, options, entrepreneurship, education, and money. And here's your host, voted one of the top 100 people in finance, Christopher Ewell. Are you ready to finally learn how the market really works? Well, now's your chance. I have a free book for you over at secretinvestingbook.com. And this outlines 13 of the biggest secrets that Wall Street doesn't want you to know, like how to get a positively unfair advantage in the stock market. This is everything you're going to need all in one place. And the way to get this is by going to secretinvestingbook.com. Now, this book is free. It is free for you. I paid for the book. I just need you to help me out by covering the shipping from our office to your house. So go to Secret Investing Book right now. Get your free copy today and I'll ship this out right away and you can get the positively unfair advantage in the stock market by reading these 13 secrets that Wall Street does not want you to know. So get your free book over at secretinvestingbook.com today. The How to Trade Stock Options podcast is now exclusively on sharevision.com, the first dedicated streaming platform for the world of finance. And that's where you can find us every single week over at sharevision.com. Just head to sharevision.com to learn more and type in 10 minute stock trader in the search bar. Come like and subscribe. I can't wait to see you over there at sharevision.com, the first dedicated streaming platform for the world of finance. Good afternoon, traders. How are y'all doing this Friday afternoon? I'm a little under the weather. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's Corona part two. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, last night laying around the laying around the house with the family, I'm like, something ain't right. <laughs> like this is there is something off. And then uh could not sleep last night. Had to get up early, get the kids ready for school. So yeah, I've 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 had better days. I hope you are having a great day though. I uh I did some work for you. Brian, especially, this is for you. Um, Michael Beeson had uh, emailed into our support team asking for the uh, the PowerPoint. And I was like, you know what? I got to get that done. So I worked on it today. It is done and you can download it yourself. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do two things for you. In the chat, I'm going to drop it in right here. So you can just click that link right there to get it. Or... If you go to the trading room members area, just log in, go down to trading rules. You'll see this big blue button right here. Click that and it will immediately download for you. And then, in fact, I'll even use the download. Boom. You will have the trading rules. Now, also, I, uh, I edited it a little bit to be helpful for keeping bullish and bearish criteria separate. So when you see a green border like this one here, that is the bullish criteria. If you see a red border like this one here, that is the bearish criteria. Like I was saying, um, I had written this basically in the midst of a very long and prolonged bull market. And I was like, well, I'm never gonna have to worry about writing a bear market. And uh, then of course we immediately entered a bear market. So yeah, we've been kind of coasting with that for a while. Isaac, good afternoon, man. Glad you made it. Glad you made it. Like I was just saying, you guys can go and download your own copies of this. I put a link in the chat, but also it is in the trading room. Isaac, that's super kind of you. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine. So so true story. This weekend, um, my little one turns seven and we're supposed to have uh, kids over for a sleepover. And I'm like, oh, no, I am not in the mood to deal with you know, other people's kids. <laughs> Plus we got our maid coming tomorrow morning uh, to try and um, clean up the house before they all get here. And then we got soccer games. So tomorrow's this weekend is going to be absolutely crazy. Um, so yeah, it's, it's is what it is. So it's all good. Donna, you are welcome. Glad I could hook you up. Michael Beeson, glad to help you out, man. Um, like I said, it's been a long time coming. I just finally 
finally had some time to get around to it today. Had a uh, podcast interview this morning with uh, Amit, the CEO of ShareVision. Um, and actually on that topic, let's go to ShareVision real quick. Let's go to ShareVision real quick. <laughs> you want to be a trader that hasn't made. <laughs> uh on the homepage of ShareVision, you should be able to see um, Kavan's interview. So this is the only place to find it right now. I actually rewatched it this morning. I was wearing the exact same shirt, which I thought was funny. But um, I was really glad that Kavan took the time out of his day to uh, meet with me. He even took a day off of work to meet with me. And um, it was awesome being able to chat with him, let him know how I could help him let him tell you in his own words, what he's learned, how he's learned it. I was super, super, super impressed with, uh, Kavan. He really came to the table here. So Kavan, if you're here, really proud of you, dude. And like I say, I would love the opportunity to meet with all of you guys one-on-one. -on -one. And like I say, this is no sales pitch or anything like this. I want to know how I can help you. So take what you see with Kavan as an example, and I would love to meet with you guys one-on-one -on -one to see where I can come through and help you guys out some more. So like I said, uh, the PowerPoint is out there now. All the bullish criteria has a green border. All the bearish criteria has a red border if it's different. There are some things that are the same, like adding to winners. Let me make this bigger. Like adding to winners. Uh, this is going to be basically the same thing either way, right? Price moves one ATR from entry. That doesn't have to be bullish or bearish, just moves, right? Then rolling winners. So I typed this in uh, and I, I try to make it a circle for rolling, right? So we're only going to roll winners. If you guys remember, we did this on Fastly and in Peloton. Both were great trades. Um, we rolled our winners to keep A, to uh, reduce some margin because the trades were up like 75% at least at that point, which is part of the criteria. The original option has to be up at least 75%. We rolled it to keep it alive. We rolled it to uh, reduce the margin requirements. And we rolled it to take profits off the table. All three reasons to do so. But really, you're only going to be doing it when you add to winners. Only when it's up 75%. Sell the closer. And the funny thing is, it's so flippant when I can say only when it's up 75%. Because that's going to happen. That's not an unusual occurrence. That's why we need to build a slide with directions. Because that's going to happen. It's already happened. It will continue to happen. Not every time, of course, but that's how it works. Anyway, so sell to close the original position, then buy to open a sh open strike closer. At, hang on. I may need to rewrite that. I'm not going to change anything today because this has been uh, already uploaded. Buy to open a strike closer to at the money. So that's where I was like, I don't need a bullish or bearish version. The objective is to be closer to at the money, but it needs to have the same liquidity standards. Add a second unit at that new strike. And then that doubles your overall position while reducing your overall margin. So yeah, overall, it's a huge win-win. Um, and then the planned exit points, nothing changed between bullish or bearish. Everything's exactly the same. And then the scanners and the charts, I just kind of updated a little bit. The real difference is basically price above or price below. And then the Keltner channels down here. What I have found through backtesting and experience is clearly prices fall faster than they rise. So we use a second Keltner channel when we are buying, going long into a stock. We use a third Keltner channel when we are short selling, when we are buying puts, when we're going short the stock, right? The objective is to work within what is happening with the stock. Then the relative strength, I did make a couple changes here. So you can see over 75 and then under 125. That's really the only difference is there. And then under negative 10% versus over positive 10%. But the calculation remains the same. So all of that's the same. Uh, the back testing criteria, nothing changed there. Liquidity criteria, nothing changed there. And then finally, position sizing. This is like the reason everything flows down into position sizing is this is all offensive, right? Everything in the triangle pyramid funnel part is offensive. But if something goes wrong, we have to have our position size in place. That's the only defensive measure we have is our exit points and our position size. And our exit points we only do at the end of the day. So if you have your position size right, it shouldn't wipe you out ever. 
And that's why we have this calculation here of working with the 2% and the ATRs to balance that risk between all the different stocks. So yeah, that's your guys's included, uh, you know, of course, part of the trading room. So I'm glad I could help you out with that. Uh, Isaac says he's definitely watching that today. And he says, email you about talking. Yeah, let's let's chat, talking one-on-one. -on -one. Um, April probably emailed you guys already. Um, I asked her, there was one day where I was like, hey, you know everybody who came today, send them an email, say, hey, can we just chat with you guys one-on-one? -on -one? Um, if she hasn't, let's uh, let's get that that worked out so we can meet with you guys. Um, this is my pleasure, my 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 honor to work with you. So okay, that's uh, that's everything I want to cover here. Now make sure you go watch Kavan's interview today, um, and then let's get into it. Let's get into trading. Let's get into our market analysis. This is the 10 minute trading room. And this is how to trade in only 10 minutes a day and exactly how we take the guesswork out of trading. Just for you, Isaac. <laughs> I love doing that. It's fun to me. Um, okay. So with the 10 minutes to trading or 10 minutes to freedom trading strategy, everything, all, all of our moves start with the market. When they start with the market, we need to see some specific criteria. Now things have been bearish over the last few weeks. So I'm going to assume we are going to need to look at a bearish setup here. So let's look at this. So we need to see the S&P 500 under the 10 day, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the 10 day under the 20 day with price under the 50 day. Let's take a look at that. Oh, snap. <laughs> Things are changing. Things are changing because while the 10 day, which is the blue line, is not quite crossed over the black line. I've got it circled here because mathematically, unless we get a big down day Monday, that's going to happen. So actually, let's go over to our bullish criteria. The 10 day needs to be above the 20 day, which we don't have yet. Price is now above the 50 day, which is this red line here. Now, as I've said before, I am no perma bear, perma bull, perma anything. I am an opportunist and so are you. So at this point, we need to be thinking to ourselves, we need to have the mental clarity and flexibility to say, we need to start looking at long positions. We need, we're we not ready yet. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. The MMFI, okay? The MMFI, that is now over 50%. I'll make that bigger for you. MMFI is now over 50%. So half of the stocks in the S&P 500 have now gotten over their 50-day moving average, which I was telling you guys earlier this week is actually great. It's constructive. It's not surprising either because the 50-day throughout a bear market will continue to move down. So that hurdle to cross is getting easier and easier for price. So um, this has not happened yet, but price is over the 50, MMFI is over 50, and FinClub, our AI data, is showing red today. I don't know why it shows red today. Maybe we will get the reverse down on Monday. I'm not trying to predict why. All I know is that Fin Club really saved us over the last few days, giving us that heads up that, hey, the market uh, is looking more bullish. And because of that, we didn't put on additional short trades. We kept a lot of our profits and we didn't get, uh, you know, a couple of losers on the board that we were able to avoid. So I really, really love Fin Club for that because it really helps us just honestly keeps us out of trouble. That's the easiest way to look at it. Okay, so with that said, we do not have much of a confluence here at all. This is not true, almost true. This was red, this was over. So we don't have any sort of confluence together. So this is a transition day. Transition days are when we are not in the market because we're in all cash right now. And we will continue to wait for a valid market setup because the market sets up first. Now I know what you're thinking to yourself, how long do we wait? Wait in cash for proper setups. How long? As long as it takes. Um, I need to text Mark Minervini back. I need to get him back on the show. But um, yeah, uh, there were a couple weeks um, earlier this year between uh, when we got out of our longs before we started getting into shorts where we, we, we didn't have any trades to put on. That may happen again. Or we could very quickly get into a bullish situation. But the point is, is just to wait until we get the proper setup. 
Isaac says, MMFI over 50 kills it. Therefore, it's an offensive day. It's not offensive. It's not offensive. It's not because we have a red fin club day and we don't have the 10 crossed over the 20 yet. Not yet. Nima says, hey, Chris, if we have time, can you explain how FinClub works and why we rely on that? Is there any algorithm that it follows? I would love to. So what's really cool about FinClub is they do provide. Now, if you're a day trader, this works really, really well for day traders. And I know the people who uh, I guess you could say invented FinClub personally. They uh, they took the methodology from a hedge fund here in Texas and basically um, codified it and put it into uh, this platform here. So they do give target stock prices and on a green day, in fact, let's go to historical on a green day, you'll actually see a bunch pull through, say, here's the target price. Did it hit it? Yeah. Here's the target price. It got within 88% of it. So on a day-to-day uh, -day basis, it works really great for day traders, but that's not the way we trade, right? We trade at the end of the day. We're trying to swing trade this for as long as they take. And um, so I use this and they told me this one day. I didn't even realize how important this was um, until I was talking to them one day. And they were like, you realize like that, that trumps everything. You know how how uh, we say that the market, where's that? How the market trumps all, right? For them and the way that they work, this indicator right at the top trumps everything. And the easiest way to describe it is they can see, and you can see it too. You just got to access the data, which clearly I have no idea how to get access to it. You can see where the dark pools are. You can see where the hedge funds are trading. You can see where the HFT algos are at. Basically, it's all the algorithms that are already out there with open trades. They are tapping into that data, which is available. You just got to be able to find it. And then they're mixing it all into one indicator right? Instead of 55 different data points to look at, they aggregate it and say, okay, this is red, green, yellow, uh, red, green, yellow, and orange. That's it. And um, basically, and, and they confirmed this too. They said, green, that's the day when you go long. Anything other than green is the day you're either short or you wait in cash. So yeah, I wish I knew more about the details of that because I'd love to dig into it too, but that's where it comes from. Great question, Nima. All right, so where is our PowerPoint here? All right, so we have covered the market. We're not even going to look at charts because today is a transition day. So holding 100% cash going into the weekend, letting the market tell us where it's going to go, right? So the amount of actual trading today, 30 seconds, right? I am a little surprised, little surprised that we are as fast as we are moving from a bearish environment to a bullish environment. I'm not going to fight it and neither should you just let the trend go where it's going to go. And hopefully it won't chop up like it did, you know, a few weeks back, let the trend work in the direction it's going to go. Now let's move on to our final thoughts. Remember, uh, you can now download your own version of this inside the trading room, uh, in this tab right here, trading room benefits, just go down to the bottom where it says trading rules. You click this blue button and it'll download straight to your computer, which is the click of a mouse or in the chat. I'll drop it in there even one more time in the chat. You can click that link and that'll get you as well. All right. So the question I found on the internet for today is stock trading on the weekends. Can you do stock trading on the weekends? So way back when, when Jesse Livermore uh, was trading, he went to places called bucket shops. Jesse Livermore is one of the greatest traders of all time. Um, and they didn't actually buy or sell your um, assets, right? You were actually taking possession of the shares. You were basically betting on uh, like a casino, right? Like a horse race. Hey, I think Apple stock is going to go up. Hey, I think Apple stock is going to go down. And you could place a bet and you could win money just exactly like gambling without actually taking shares or contracts or anything. And I think that there is possibilities of doing something similar to that in uh, the shadier parts of the internet, <laughs> maybe like binary options, things like that, which ba basically binary options are exactly that. But stock trading on the weekends is kind of the, 
kind of a mute point. There's there's no real trades. If there is liquidity out there, it's not something that is uh, available to everybody. And I did some Googling just to double check that I wasn't crazy. And I found this article on Investopedia. It says there's not really a way to trade on the weekends. There are some after hours trades that'll go on Friday afternoon and extended hours. Um, Saturday is basically off the table. Sunday night futures open. Uh, they open at five o'clock central time. So six o'clock Eastern time. And that's not actual stock trading. That's futures trading. So the answer to, is there stock trading on the weekends? Mm, not really. What I would do if I was a 10 minute trader or somebody who's interested in being successful as a trader is use the weekends to study, use the weekends to practice, use the weekends uh, to look at that PowerPoint, use the weekends to let, uh, let yourself, <clears throat> let yourself get ready for the next week. Uh, I know a lot of traders, they'll they'll spend hours and hours and hours um, on the weekends reading through charts. Now, we don't do that. We let our scanners do it for us. But that's what they do. They let the weekends be their study time. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. Isaac says, he just started that book last night. I've been on a reading binge, loving it. Which book was it? Sorry, I missed I missed what I said. What did I say? There? What, uh, was it Reminiscences of a Stock Operator? That one's really really good i think that's the one you're talking about reminiscences of a stock operator jesse livermore yeah nema says since we're on the edge of switching from bearish to bullish can we one run the rsi and just trigger one or two bullish setups and see how it acts on monday without trading it can we run the rsi i think you mean the relative strength scanner and i don't mind the issue is pulling it over here Yep, that one. It's a short read. In fact, Isaac, if you go on YouTube and hang on, I'll tell you better. I'll find it for you real quick. Because, you know, baby boy, Chris likes to have his books read to him. Um, There is a playlist. I didn't make it. but Somebody did. Let me see if I can find it real quick. There it is. There's a playlist where somebody has got the entire book on audiobook and put it on the YouTubes. There you go. I just put it in the chat. I listened to that. I enjoyed it. You know, baby boy Chris listens to his books. Relative Strength Scanner here. It does the math for us. Oh, sorry. You guys couldn't see my screen. I'm sorry. But I just dropped the uh, the playlist there. Uh, the, the way you would do this is you would have to actually go in here and override some of these, these, uh, these uh, notions here. Like you'd have to change this to bullish. Change this to red, uh, green. And then you'd have to change MMFI to like 60. Brian, you made it. Brian made it. Hey, Brian, I know you've been asking for it. It is available now. The uh, the PowerPoint. The way to get to it is in the trading room. And then go down to the trading rules tab. And then click this button. And it's all yours. All yours. In fact, I actually put it in the chat a couple times too. If you want to just scroll up and grab it. You're welcome. I got you. You are welcome. Uh, today is a transition day, by the way, and it looks like we're about to be going to a bullish scenario. So Nemo was asking what we could see. So let's go run the bullish power scanner. Let's see what pulls through. Earlier today, just for fun, I ran this to see what happened. Yeah, we're getting a few. 43. Still 43. It's still thinking. I'm going to stop it there. That's fine for what, what we're trying to do. All right. Uh, clone, copy, transpose this. And let's drop it into the relative strength scanner. Edit, pay special values. Okay. So we're going to let that work for a second. Um, it should pull through probably a handful of them. But Nima, if you're going to do this, you you will need to override over on the right hand side because I I, uh, I try to make things easy, so it has it's all formula based right here. None of these are actually set up. Ooh, check this out. This is a surprise. Look at this. While these have really high relative strength. Their relative strength deltas are super low. Remember, relative strength. Do I have my cars? Yeah. Relative strength is the measure of average gain to average loss, which you have 
here. So relative strength is a is a fixed value. It's like if you're traveling, if your silver car, your silver Aston Martin is traveling at 100 miles an hour, that would be the spy. Okay. Now, your car, maybe this red Aston Martin is your Apple car. Okay. Your red Apple car is also traveling at 100. But your relative strength delta is a measure of itself, which is in a way, how fast are you mashing the gas pedal? So if they're both at 100, but your relative strength delta is at 50, positive 50, that means you have basically come up to 100. We've taken the speed you're going right now. You're both at 100, but yet you're going to continue on because your relative strength delta is higher. So that's what I'm seeing here is while the relative strength is strong on a lot of these, the relative strength delta is actually slowing down. Now, the measurement of this is average gain over average loss of your stock divided by the average gain over average loss of the SPY. So 50 over 25. Now the relative strength delta, that's the rate of change, okay? So we're looking over the last five days versus today. So what this means is that while this BMY has a relative strength of 184 today, it's actually 19% below its five day moving average. It's very similar to, you know, looking at a chart, right? So BMY, let's look at this. Clear all my drawings here. So while this is strong, especially while the market's been going down, actually, let's do one more thing. There's an indicator I like to use called the price compare tool that helps illustrate this. So this is the SPY down here. So while the relative strength of BMY has been really strong, it is petering out and slowing down. Its brake pedal is being mashed in relation to the SPY. And it's probably more to do with the SPY having a lot more strength right now versus this running out of strength. But that's what it means. So if you want to see a visual representation, there's that. Then also um, the... Let's see if I even have it. I don't have it. The the RSI uh, that's on like every chart ever. Let me add it real quick. A really simple way to look at this is, is the RSI, is it today on BMY, it's at 70. And then we go to SPY. The RSI of SPY is at 56. The relative strength of BMY is at 70. Relative strength, uh, the RSI of SPY is at 56. That's a really easy representation of what we do mathematically here. And we can do it all for all the stocks, which makes it a lot easier to have them all in one place. Um, I am going to plan on talking to Transbiter to see if we can build this into their platform somehow. If we can, that'd be sick. Uh, it's just math. And all the math that they need for is already in the price. So it shouldn't be a big deal. And then it'd be really cool because then we could just put it as part of our uh, chart scanning. That would save us even more time with one step. Kavan, he's late, but that's okay. I'm about to wrap up here, Kavan. I was talking about you earlier. Hope you don't mind. I was saying good things only. I was telling everybody to go watch your interview over on ShareVision because um, it was really, really insightful. I even rewatched it today. Um, Nima, I am glad that was eye-opening, man. I am here for you. I'm super glad for you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that actually, that's everything I, I wanted to cover today. Everybody go watch Kavan's video over on ShareVision. I'll drop this in the chat too. Copy link. Kavan, I added the uh, PowerPoint slide into the members area. Um, so there's a link for it on here. Uh, I shared a link over to Reminiscences of a Stock Operator audiobook. That's on YouTube. Share that in here. And then... Um, you guys now have the link to Kavan's video over on ShareVision. So hope you guys can get a chance to watch that this weekend. Plus, I'd love to get a chance to, to talk with you guys. Let, let me know how I can help you. I'm here for you. Always remember that. I, I do this for you. I know the wealth ripple effects that I'm helping create are already going out there. And that's exciting. That, that, that gives me like really, really good warm and fuzzies because I know it's it's doing good. So thank you guys for coming. Have a fantastic weekend. I got to go get this house ready for all these little kids that are going to be running around the house. So uh, 
I will uh, I'll catch you that catch you on Monday. Hopefully I'll be feeling better then. Y'all have a great weekend. Hey, don't forget before you head out, head to secretinvestingbook.com right now to get your free copy of the secret investing book. This is how to finally get a positively unfair advantage in the stock market. And it has 13 of the secrets that Wall Street does not want you to know. And I want to send this to you for free today. Just help me by covering shipping. And the way you can do that is by going to secretinvestingbook.com. That's secretinvestingbook.com. And I'll ship this out for you right away.